okay hello everyone victor momo from excel moments and in this video i want to talk about splitting a text using a character transition for those of you who use power query this is piece of cake and you're wondering why is victor doing a video to show us this because you can do it in five seconds news flash i'm not doing it with power query <laughs> i'm gonna do it with formulas next question will be why response why not <laughs> But the first thing is, let me show you the data just the way it appears. Okay, so I just have a list of, you know, presidents of the U.S. What I've done is to take out, you know, the spaces between the names. So the names are pretty, you know, just squashed. Okay, so, but at least there's a pattern to the madness, right? Which is that for the first character of the names, it's always in uppercase. So if you have George, capital G, Washington, capital W, John Adams, capital J, capital A, Thomas Jefferson, capital T, capital J. Okay, so it means that you always have from here, like now, George Washington. If you want to split, you can see that there's a lowercase e transiting to an uppercase W. So that transition from lowercase to uppercase is what makes, you know, whatever split you want to do work in Power Query. So let's do it in Power Query first of all. Okay, so this is the same data. It's already in an Excel table. So I'm going to use Alt A P T and that's going to pull up. Oh yeah, I typed that too fast. Okay, <laughs> it's going to pull up Power Query. All right, so now we have this and I'm just going to come here under the Home tab, do split column and I'm going to say lowercase to uppercase that's basically what i'm gonna do i'm not touching any other thing let me do close and load two i just want to put it here on the worksheet just so i can see it all right okay and it looks like it's fine okay good and that's done maybe like five ten seconds okay so why would i want to do this with formulas one because i like to and secondly because I did put in some pitfalls here. Okay, so let's scroll to the guys I'm interested in. Right. So when you scroll down, you would see two names that I'm interested in. Lyndon B. Johnson. I hope I pronounced that right. Yeah. That's how I've always pronounced it, even from being a kid. Somebody says Lyndon. It looks like Lyndon. Okay. So well, so Lyndon Baines Johnson. Okay. But here I've done Lyndon B. Johnson. Now B is in capital. You know letters j is in capital letters so it's not a transition because b is uppercase j is uppercase so because it's not transiting this you know split did not happen the same thing with harry truman okay so you have harry s truman but it's capital s capital t the transition doesn't happen right it only happens when there's lowercase to uppercase so for that reason you know this doesn't work and give me the results that i am looking for of course power query wizards you know can play around with power query the m language and get it done but i'll show you you know some interesting way you can fix it using formulas so let's come back here right so for this i'm going to be using you know some of my new big guns as i call them regex regular expressions uh, which we're introducing to excel you know 2024 and now even with python in excel you know you can also use regular expressions there they're very simple and easy to use all you need to identify is what the pattern is so they're very good when you know you want to match you know, a particular pattern so when it comes to pattern matching you know regex is excellent so long as there's a method to the madness okay so that's what i'm going to use in this okay so let me pull up the regex i'm interested in uh, there are three of them but i'm going to use regex extract now that makes sense right because i want to extract you know the names or if i don't even know their names the strings that match a particular pattern that's why i'm using regex extract if i wanted to replace them with something else i could use regex replace if i wanted to test if that pattern was found in the text i could use regex test so simple okay so now i would say regex extract and then i click the name here right that's my text okay so george washington then the next thing is it's asking me for the pattern the pattern always goes in double quotes okay so you need to do that and then you then put in your pattern in between so in this case what's the pattern we are seeing we are seeing that the name always starts with an uppercase okay but we don't know what character is going to start with it's going to start with a character between a and z but we don't know which one so for that you use a token that looks like this you open square brackets put a capital a hyphen capital z those of you who use power query will be you know familiar with this a little when you use your a dot dot you know so and then you close 
the square bracket so this is just saying that look for any uppercase character between a and z so that's how it starts now what follows it after an uppercase for all the names there's a lowercase right so in this case there's lowercase a to lowercase z because we don't know what it's going to be right so if you look at george there's an uppercase g then you have a lowercase e but now you don't have just one lowercase you have multiple lowercases like in george's case you have maybe five lowercases following g in john's case you have three lowercases following j Okay, so you don't know how many it's going to be, but what you know, maybe for now, is that, okay, it's going to be at least one. That's what you probably think, right? And say, okay, well, yeah, after G, you know, if the guy has two alphabets in his name, then he has, you know, at least one. So when you have, you know, situations like that, you can use a quantifier. What does the quantifier do? The quantifier says, okay, fine, I can look for this pattern, you know, based on how many times you think it's going to appear. So now I know it's going to appear to my mind one or more times so one or more times in regex just means a plus so what this means here is saying that this pattern that comes before the plus you know check if that pattern appears one or more times okay so anywhere it sees an uppercase followed by lowercase that appears one or more times is going to extract that as matching the pattern next thing is you want to use all matches right why because george matches that pattern washington matches the pattern but if you don't say all matches is only going to return for you george but you want both george and washington so let's put one and let's close the bracket okay so now we have george washington so let's take this down to all the names and see okay so good it even gives us you know the guy who has four names here george how about walker bush right it gives us the four of them so that's excellent the only thing is that for the harry truman you notice that he just threw away the s and the same thing for lyndon b johnson he just threw away the b right because of the pattern we actually wrote our pattern said that we'll have what an uppercase and we'll have lowercase that occurs one or more times but in the case of lyndon b johnson for the b the b has just an uppercase it doesn't have lowercase so it means that the lowercase doesn't occur one or more times. It actually occurs zero or more times because there are cases where it doesn't appear at all and then there are cases where it appears. So what you need to do is to change the quantifier. When you use plus, plus means one or more. But when you use asterisk, asterisk means zero or more. So let's do that and then let's take this down. Okay. And let's see now. See, now this works. So we now have lyndon b johnson and we have harry s truman and it's a very simple formula all you need to do is just get you know this pattern right and that's why i like it the fact that you know just think about the pattern know the tokens to be used know the quantifiers in this case and you are fine so this solves the problem fully so for those who don't like maybe array of arrays or multicolor multi-row arrays maybe this is a good time to stop watching the video no don't this an opportunity for you to learn it okay so now we've solved this problem but i have only one issue which is just personal preference right that i have a formula now that spills into one row so you can see george washington works i had to drag that formula down i would rather have a formula that sits in one cell and can spill you know across the entire you know um dimensions that i have here and give me all the rows and all the columns at once that's what i would prefer so when i press delete here right it doesn't just delete george washington it deletes the entire thing okay so how do i achieve that if you watch a lot of my videos i would always say that if you want to create you know those kind of arrays right multi-column multi-row right you need to be thinking of two functions most times you're thinking of make array you know and that kind of makes sense right it's make array and then you think about reduce so those are the two functions most times that we get to use in situations like this so what i'm going to use here is the reduce function right i'm not going to explain in so much detail here the reduce function i think i've done that in a lot of videos but i probably should have one video dedicated you know for that purpose right so but what we are going to do here is this okay let me just go back and show you so this is the idea of the reduce function you perform the calculation row by row but every time you keep aggregating what you've done and you're keeping it somewhere so this is how it works if i were to go in row by row i would do george washington i would then keep george washington somewhere right 
Now I will go to row two and then I will get John Adams. I would remember that I already had George Washington stored somewhere. So I take John Adams and I stack it with George Washington. Now I now have George and John. So those two are like my results as of now. So then I go to the third row. Now I get Thomas Jefferson. So Thomas Jefferson, now I would stack it. Of course, I'm not going to be stacking it with only George because my result currently is both George and John. So I'm going to stack Thomas with, you know, uh, George and John. And then I have those three. And that's how I keep going, you know, all the way. And that's what the reduce function does, right? As in then the final result is everything you have accumulated or aggregated so far so that's kind of the idea of what we are going to do okay so we are going to use the reduce function here and say reduce the initial value right there are you know different school of thought here some would say okay use the first value in here for your reduce yes that would work and then the array part becomes a little complex sometimes i just prefer to use nothing in here Okay, there are implications to both approaches, but I'll take this in this case. Then in terms of the array, because I want this to be done for every of the presidential names here. So this is going to be my array. Okay, so I do control shift down, then I come back up using control backspace. Right, so I'm here. Okay, so now I now go into the calculation part. So I pull up a lambda, right, and I'm going to have two variables, A and B. A is my accumulator, which is what I have aggregated or stored so far. Okay, like I explained when I was kind of trying to show you how the reduce will work. Then B, B is an iterator. What B does is that B iterates through this array. Okay, so what it means is that B will start with the first element here, which is B4. George Washington, obviously. It's going to do whatever, you know, transformation or calculation you tell it to do. Then when it does that, it's going to store that result in the accumulator. Okay, which is A, right? By the time B is going the next time, B is no more going to go to B4. B is going to go to B5 because now it has used B4. It's going to go to B5. It has something already stored in the accumulator. It then brings that in addition to what it gets from B5. Then you now have a new accumulator. So it's like at every step, you know, you are adding to what you have stored. Okay? So you don't throw away things. So you keep adding and adding and adding. So by the time you get to the last row, you know, you will have what you've aggregated for every other thing but the last row. Then the last row is then stacked with that. That's kind of how it works. I think I've done, I need to point to a video where I've done this visually. But if I haven't, I'll do a video, you know, and kind of show you. But once you understand the reduce, it's very powerful. Okay, so now what we are going to do is we are going to stack you know which is vertical stack because it's like take what i have so far and then stack what i'm bringing into it so v stack and i'm going to v stack a which is the accumulator with the result of the current you know transformation that i'm going to do so what happens is this a is what you have accumulated so far okay but what does it do with each of these values in b when it sees them it's going to do exactly what we did at the beginning which is the regex extract that's what it's going to do so it's going to do the regex extract so that it can get the different names and then it will keep stacking them on top of themselves so basically i'm going to repeat that regex extract the same thing i did at the very beginning okay in this case my text is going to be b why because b is going to be going through each of these names one after the other so at every point in time you know it's going to pick one of the names depending on where it is then the pattern is what we did before so nothing new here okay a to z and then lowercase a to z and asterisk okay and then we do want to return all the matches we'll close the bracket right okay so everybody remembers this close the lambda okay close the reduce all right okay so now we have one formula that spews everything the first row is redundant because I used, you know, this blank as my initial value. So what I can do is I can just do a drop and just say drop that first row. Okay. So now everything is aligned as you can see. So George Washington, blah, blah, blah. Now everywhere where it cannot, you know, find a name because now it uses the maximum number of columns it can find. So George Bush has four names. So that's why it has four columns. But most of the other guys don't have up to four names and that's why they have hash n's here so you can just put an if error there and say oh sorry and just say if it is an error you know just make it blank okay so if error then at the end here make it blank 
right okay and now we have everything we want let's see what's happening with harry s truman okay nothing has changed they are still fine right lyndon b johnson is fine harry s truman is fine and now if you delete one cell here it's going to delete everything because it's all sitting in one cell okay so now you've been able to solve it in a way that you have one dynamic formula that it's able to give you you know all the names at once the beautiful thing about this is that if george washington has a middle name let's say victor okay automatically that gets you know added in so if anything changes in the source data it's also going to update in the results so that's what i wanted to show you in this video i hope you enjoyed it beyond me showing you just the character transition in power query but i decided to leverage you know regex and also show you you know the power of you know formulas and you know some of the new functions that we now have in excel so i really hope you like this video if you did please hit the like button you can also subscribe to the channel excel moments for now i'm out <laughs>